Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. Watch me reviving a dead series and it is Featurings. I have an entire playlist but it's been a while since I featured a replay. This however I had to do. It's from Steron and he is driving the one and only the Jagdtiger. He's driving, um, he's shooting while driving and barely misses here a Japanese medium tank. If he would have properly hit not much would have been left of this more light than actually medium tank because the Jagdtiger has the 128mm Puck 44 with 40 rounds of ammunition. The Panzergranate 43 has 272mm of penetration, 786.5 grams of TNT equivalent bursting charge and 940 meters per second massive velocity and out of all the tanks he hits the turret face of a T-32 where he barely cannot go through. Now the Treibspiegelgeschoss that the Maus and the 100 have, that might have gotten through but the Jagdtiger with almost the same gun, basically the same gun, doesn't get it because balance. And uh, then there's also the high explosive rounds, 37 millimeters of pen and that just annihilates light tanks. Five rounds uh, Storon has taken with him and he also reloads now for a second time. I think the first time he reloaded he intended to duel here the T-32. If that goes a bit hull down it's actually pretty d difficult to shot trap or anything with the AP. Now by the way the Jagdtiger has the same battle rating as the Ferdinand. Both are 6.7. And while the long 88 is a fantastic weapon in many aspects, the higher rate of fire um, outweighs the lack of penetration and bursting charge. Um, yeah. Oof. <laughs> That's overpressure. Uh, 3.7 kilograms of TNT equivalent for the HE shell, by the way, resulting in 37 millimeters of penetration. I cut here a little bit because for several minutes nothing happened. And then this scene. Beautiful. That is again over pressure and we just can see how Storon thought about sh shooting somewhere else but then apparently remembered to have HE loaded and now he again switches ammunition type to HE. He has only two shells left and apparently that shell type is uh, better and um, there is also now a French light tank. And we see here this beautiful situation awareness. We see here, by the way, a sturdy German front line. We see tanks on the flanks, both to the left and to the right. Uh, and, and the German tanks have not overextended. And here, <laughs> hitting the muzzle brake of the 90mm and still splashing him. Again, the AP would have not been able to do this, despite its great power. But I digress. And uh, now he's out of HE shells and he has claimed five kills with it. So that's a pretty good ratio if you'd ask me. Now going back to the funny thing here. <laughs> oh, by the way, ah, again, I'm interrupting myself. Killing IS-2s was what this thing was amazing at when the ground forces beta was there and this tank was absolutely overpowered because nothing could pen it from the front. Remember kids, there were times in War Thunder, bouncing off the front plate of the T-32, there were times in War Thunder where this gun was one of the strongest guns in the game and the strongest penetration of any gun in any um, tank was the ISU-152's heat round with 250 millimeters of penetration. Yeah, once upon a time, that was the strongest penetration in War Thunder. 250 millimeters. Those days are long gone and what the hell was this Tiger 2 looking at? I don't know. Anyway. So, yeah, the Tiger 2 has fallen uh, unnecessarily, if you'd ask me. And um, again, Storon is here uh, kind of running out of teammates, but not too drastically. And he is absolutely willing to take down this T-32 
and he uses the building to great efficiency uh, to give himself cover from any sort of uh, flanking threat and uh, also uh, trying to have somewhere to retreat to if he gets damaged, gun barrel knocked out, you know the usual things. And in this situation, when a uh, Jagdtiger doesn't get flanked, it is still a fearsome tank. So, again, this makes me wonder how this tank has the exact same battle rating as the Ferdinand. Because they're in the same tech tree, they are doing basically the same, and the Ferdinand is a really good tank destroyer at long range because of the higher rate of fire from the long 88, which still has some pretty amazing penetration for something that fires APCVC. But the thing is, in a fight of the two, in theory or in arcade, the Jagdtiger just more or less can one-shot a Ferdinand easily and pen it almost everywhere on the front, versus the Ferdinand having to resort to APCR and nobody does this, um, you know, <laughs> out of his pure will. <laughs> That's just a necessary evil. APCR just is absolutely bad. And I'm not quite sure what those two are doing. He waits patiently and he pans the turret front of this T-54. That was just patience. He absorbs a great many shots and then the machine gun of one of the two American tanks knocks out his track and the second one. Now, spoiler here, he's not fully upgraded. Storon is not fully upgraded and already he's sitting at 8 kills. And yeah, uh, he smoked himself up and uh, that allows the Sherman here to flank him. Now, hopefully one of the teammates is aware. He still cannot move extremely long repair times and he loses half his crew. Now that's actually lucky and he prioritizes the T-32 and one-shots him and finally a teammate also um, saved him from his certain demise by killing the Sherman. And this is when Sherman teams really can go extremely strong. You have four lineups, you have still the tools to deal with most of the enemies. If the German teams get cracked, if the German teams don't get cracked in the first few minutes and they are really playing defensively, and they're holding the line. They can be, even at this battle rating, extremely efficient. And we saw this here with the playstyle of Sterone. Don't think that you are, uh, you know, driving uh, Tiger 2 in actual World War 2. Just a little bit here to frighten the Werribus. You know what made the Tiger tank really good? The Tiger tank earned its reputation at its, as it was true only with the creme de la creme of the German tankers that already had plenty of experience in Panzer 3s and 4s and also it was not used uh, in single operations but in units where it was embedded um, and its flank was secured by Panzer 3s and Panzer 4s and even Panthers and uh, they worked at long range where they also could angle. Whenever a Tiger was used in close quarters in city fights they also suffered a lot of casualties. Oh unfortunate. M48 90mm heat, yep, and he loses his transmission and that was actually pretty lucky because that 90mm heat also could go through the superstructure and uh, you know that is just a perfect demonstration of what power creep is. Once upon a time you had this amazing performance of the 128mm from the Yachty coming back to it uh, but you had to pay for it with a hefty reload and uh, now you have tanks like the M48 which is one of those tanks that I absolutely don't like but nevertheless it has a gun that is almost perfect for dealing with the Jagdtiger because it has a much higher rate of fire you have the heat to go through the front and uh, you also have APCBC to one shot the Jagdtiger from the side uh, with the, yeah <laughs> a different shell if you choose to do so and you know there are tanks that have up to 433 millimeters of penetration. That was a mistake showing broadside. That 
is what the 128 millimeter does to you totally eradicating your crew 10 kills already and he has no he rounds remaining but we can see that the german team here is still existing and the german team is well distributed across the battlefield um somebody is contesting c uh in a moment maybe also uh, b will fall there it is gets getting decaptured you see this is where being the force on the battlefield means something there were a lot of lucky instances but it was still well played and in a way this is how it was in the old days basically um the Jagdtiger really bringing the fight to the enemy by letting the enemies come to it in front of its gun and then the he combined with the ap does the trick but this was was just played in a way where i have the impression that storon didn't play the young tiger for the first time in fact might be a really experienced tanker so there is now one enemy and oh that was satisfying that was kill number 11 and let me spoil you the end nothing further happens and let's have a look at the post battle results and they see it 80,000 civil lines 8,800 research points survivor and heavy metal hero together with a task and uh, you know some uh, nice things to put on your uniform and also a daily task done what more you can ask for so that was Storon in the Yacht Tiger a clean 11 kill double ace gameplay and also survivor that's what I love to see and he's also pretty pretty up high in the ranking of his team as number one with 3310 score points so I'm quite sure this might have been a nuke but um, I had one of those battles myself in a different tank and I choose to stay in the tank to get the survivor instead of getting the nuke because we won anyway and this is it today for me Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. I hope you found this video entertaining. Why not give it a like? For you it's just a click, for me it means the world. Subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see more. And we'll see each other obviously on the waves, in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.